um, where you know you might get an expansion or a DLC available a month early, depending on what system you're playing on, um, and that can be uh, frustrating for for gamers who feel like, oh, yay, I can play this game anyway. But, you know, my friend over here who plays on a different system, they're experiencing new content a month before I am. It is frustrating, but it's part of the business. Um, it's, nothing, it's nothing different than what we've seen in every single industry that we know of in the, at, well, right now in the world. Because it's exactly the same that has happened with the streaming services. It's mm -hmm. exactly the same that before used to happen with cable services. It's exactly the same that happens with furniture places. It's like if you want a specific piece of furniture, you're not going to go to the opposite store to get it. It's ex if, you want a, if you want a Mac double, if you want a Big Mac, you're not going to go to Burger King to get it. You see? So yeah. it's, the game's it's, telling you, stop crying about exclusivity, all right? Yeah, Just, stop yeah. it. It's, it's the name of the stop game, y'all. <laughs> All right. game. You don't go to Arby's to get a Whopper. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. And I think, you know, even the way that we talk about it has been informed by the video game industry, right? We call it exclusive content. And exclusive feels good. It feels exciting. It feels like you're a part of a club that other people aren't a part of. And everyone wants to fit in. Everyone wants to be a part of something. So when we start talking about exclusive content, it has a very positive connotation. The reality of it is we could also say that it's playing favorites. Yeah, we could say so it can it can feel good to have exclusive content. It can feel bad to feel like the other group of people is the parent's favorite. And so we start talking about exclusivity. I think uh, favoritism is uh, an equally appropriate way to talk about it and to give uh, just the other side of the coin and some of the negatives of the, uh, the industry. It is the way that things are, but it doesn't necessarily mean that the way that things are are always right or correct. And I'm so God looks at someone's heart. He doesn't look at you know, who's the most prim and, you know, best looking, pretty, whatever. Um, you know, sometimes here in the Western world, we get this thing, it's like this man of God syndrome where we built an entire ministry based off of one person and their names on every poster, their names on every booklet. And we exalt them to this, almost like this Moses type level where it's like, this guy's like the most high priest of high priests. And, in this new covenant, here's the good news, guys. Everybody can function how Jesus did. Everybody can walk the walk. Everybody can do it. It's not about a, a few select. God has a calling for everybody. He does say that some are given less. You know, some, some may just have less, but it says if you take those things, they will multiply. You may feel like, Lord, I'm at a disadvantage because I'm in a wheelchair. Lord, I'm at a disadvantage because I have a speech impediment, Lord, I'm at a disadvantage. But know that even if you just give the Lord what you have, he will take that and he will double that. He will multiply that. Um, God is so faithful in those type of things. Don't, don't put a limit on it. 